When I think of the Detroit Narrative Agency, three words come to mind. They are fire, brilliance, Woo! and unapologetic. Woo! Please welcome award-winning artist and founding director, Il Weaver, and their colleague, Paige Watkins, who is an associate director within the organization. Both of these change makers contribute to multiple justice and narrative-based initiatives within Detroit. All right, hello. Um, the stories that we tell about a place form a kind of DNA, shaping what that place is and what it can become. For too long, the stories that have been told about Detroit have called it broken, have said it needs saving from itself, but missing from those narratives is the Detroit that's been saving itself all along, the Detroit that's pushing back against marginalization and erasure, the Detroit that has another vision for the future that's based in liberation and justice. Um, at DNA, we are amplifying that Detroit, incubating quality and compelling stories that will shift the dominant narratives about Detroit towards liberation and justice. And Get the hang of this click. So, uh, first of all, we want to acknowledge and uplift the history of Detroit, Eston, Anishinaabe, and many other indigenous peoples' land, the largest majority black city in the nation, with a long legacy of African diaspora global contributions. It was once the last stop on the Underground Railroad. The code name was Midnight. And Detroit is also the U.S. city with the largest concentration of Arab Americans. It's a border city. I can see Windsor from our bedroom um, with a historic and growing Latinx community and a legacy of Asian American communities and movements. And we also want to honor the indigenous land that we are on now that was honored this morning as well. The Wampanoa peoples and all the indigenous people whose land was stolen from here. Thank you. So uh, DNA is, comes out of this uh, model of media-based organizing that has been growing in a grassroots way in Detroit for a really long time. We're a sponsor project of Allied Media Projects, or AMP. You might know about the Allied Media Conference that happens every year. Um, and AMP defines media-based organizing as any collaborative process that uses media, art, technology to address the roots of problems and advance holistic solutions towards a more just and creative world. Media-based organizing is a community-based process that investigates problems, envisions solutions, and then works together to make them real. And that's the type of work that we're invested in with DNA. And the values that guide the work of DNA are the creation of stories by Detroit communities to advance liberation and justice. And we prioritize explicitly Black Detroiters, brown Detroiters, indigenous, lifelong and long time, immigrant, disabled, poor working class, trans, non-binary, and women and femme Detroiters, the Detroiters whose voices should be at the forefront of the stories being told about the city. The development of narratives that spotlight the complexities of our cities, not reduce them to two-dimensional narratives by folks from the outside who have the resources to tell them from a limited point of view. Growing an ecosystem of community organizers, storytellers, and film slash media makers working in tandem to tell Detroit stories that address systemic inequities and build power, this idea of narrative power um, that Color of Change and Firelight and others have been developing that our communities can build power together and not just co-create but co-liberate, um, co-resist and um, actually be able to work towards shifting towards that liberation and justice through movement building and media making together. A commitment to cultivating the craft of storytelling and really honoring the opportunities for us to learn and grow in that context as well and have aesthetic agency to express our stories in powerful ways. So, um, this, 
Okay, so with all those uh, values in mind, we when we first started DNA, we thought it was really important to engage uh, Detroiters throughout the development of the grant making process. So they were really involved in helping us shape our grant priorities for our first round of fellows, um, the narratives that they wanted to see shift. Um, and we did that through uh, convening an advisory team who held community conversations and forums to identify how to better promote the opportunity, make it accessible, and learn what resources, skills, and infrastructure folks actually really needed to help um, the applicants produce compelling and aesthetically pleasing uh, moving image projects. So um, we asked three major questions at each of these gatherings. What stories are Detroiters sick of hearing about Detroit? What stories do Detroit, Detroiters actually want to see? And what are the skills or infrastructure needs that you um, see, right? So what are the things that are needed to build more infrastructure? Um, and so that, that was just a video of our, one of our community forums. Um, and through those community forums, oh, well, actually, sorry. <laughs> um, Wes actually was one of our advisory team members. Wes and I were both on the advisory team in 2016 together um, to help do this work. And uh, so he's going to come up and just talk a little bit about what we learned from that process. So, yeah, thanks. So I'm Wesley Taylor. I was part of the advisory team. And I'm just going to share about the process, um, the, revol the results of these community forums and conversations are visualized on the screen. Uh, Detroiters told us they wanted to shift from the stories of Detroit as a blank slate and more recently the stories of a comeback city being saved by white um, corporate giants. Two narratives that um, address systematic root causes and uplift the history and legacy of the place. Um, they told us what the infrastructural needs were including access to equipment and mentorship. Um, this data effectively shaped the guidelines for our 2016 C grant application process. Um, we plan to periodically update these narrative shifting and infrastructural building priorities through an ongoing process. So there's more to come to see with that. Um, and then so as a member of the, of the advisory team, we were responsible to intentionally invite community members to apply and spread the word about DNA. Um, and then I'm kind of on the stage, I flew all the way to Boston to introduce this really embarrassing video. Um, <laughs> but here's the video and it was effective as a way to um, really spread the word through media. The art centerpiece, but the retail and residential development Ooh, not this. Hello, are you suffering from narrative-induced community injury? <laughs> That's right. Do you suffer from stereotyping, negative representation, and sensationalized stories that leave out the facts? Are you sick of people talking about Detroit as a blank slate in need of a savior? Well, you're in luck. We are the Detroit Narrative Agency, DNA. Projects applied thanks to that amazing workshop, um, and also to really intentional um, invitation process by our advisory team. And ten of those projects were selected. Um, those ten projects went through a year-long C grant project process, and they were supported in a number of ways, including funding, mentorship, training, fiscal sponsorship, access to equipment, uh, workspace out of our media lab in our office at Ally Media Projects. Uh, resource sharing between cohort projects and a larger ecosystem that we've been building out of folks that are community storytellers, community organizers, and folks that are crafts, people, technicians, as media makers. And five of those projects that went through the initial C grant program then advanced to our current phase of what we call DNA 2.0 uh, fellowship program and is uh, supporting a cohort of Detroit filmmakers who are black and brown Detroiters developing short films and accompanying community impact strategies. So now we're gonna share a little bit more of their projects and also look at all their beautiful faces. These are actually uh, like family portraits that we co-created with uh, the co-creation studio when they came to visit us for a workshop and uh, was actually shot by our friend Kai Dowridge. Yeah, so um 
Uh, actually, also just to plug that all five of the directors of these films are here. They're all like kind of sitting Woo! Here. And, and tomorrow you'll tonight, tonight. or yeah, t yesterday was tomorrow. Today is tonight. Um, <laughs> you'll actually get to see the films. Well, uh, they'll be screening at the seven o'clock program in the evening. So. Uh, the first one that we want to talk about is Take Me Home. It's a documentary short that's directed by Orlando Ford and produced by John Sloan. Uh, home foreclosure crisis has gripped Detroit, Michigan for over a decade. In this time, illegally inflated property taxes have caused more than 100,000 working families to lose their homes. The last time Americans experienced anything near this alarming rate of home foreclosure was during the Great Depression. While headlines read of the so-called rebirth of Motor City, many Detroit neighborhoods have been devastated with African-American communities hit hardest of all. Take Me Home follows one family as they fight to save their home and struggle to keep their neighborhoods and communities from being lost. Oh, okay, I'll just do all. <laughs> we were gonna switch off, but it's fine. Dangerous Times Rebellious Responses is a documentary short that's directed by Alicia Diaz and produced by Consuela Lopez with Karen Cardenas. The sanctuary movement of the 1980s was a religious and political campaign driven by over 500 congregations across 11 denominations in the US to provide safe haven for Central American refugees fleeing civil conflict. Dangerous Chimes traces its rise in Detroit through the personal accounts of Esther Galvez, a Latinx sanctuary advocate, and Sianuk Mariona, whose family was among the most visible Salvadorian exiles in the US at the time. In partnership with the community of immigrant, uh, documented and undocumented young Detroit activists, they uh, created this documentary. Um, Side Lots is a documentary short that's directed by Atiano Niara Casagam and produced by Natasha Tamate Weiss. <coughs> Side Lots is a love story of black land reclamation told in ritual between Detroit, Alabama, and Kenya. It follows one family on Detroit's east side as their story of urban farming unfolds into a spiritual journey of discovery, loss, and re indigenization. By digging up familial and land roots across the diaspora, Side Lots illuminates all that is sacred in the land and encourages a radical reconsideration of how we view the earth immediately underneath our feet. Riding with Aunt DDOT is an experimental narrative short that's directed by Brie Gant, produced by Paige Wood and Honey Cross, and co-written by Paige Wood and Brie Gant. Um, in riding with Aunt Didot, a disillusioned young artist finds out that she might be an alien princess while riding city transit and must decide whether or not she will continue to ride onwards to her home world or get off the bus and back into a reality that she hates. And Fem Queen Chronicles, which is a web series pilot directed by Aya Simone, co-written by Aya Simone and Paige Wood, produced by Paige Wood with Sierra Malone and Brie Campbell as impact producers. Um, Chanel and her friends Erica, Amira, and Siobhan are all just trying to make it through the day without getting clocked as trans women or clocking someone over the head along the way. <laughs> Fem Queen Chronicles is a new web series about the lives of four black trans women as they navigate through love, life, trade, and shade in the city of Detroit, written, directed, and brought to life by black trans women themselves. So these are the five projects that uh, have been supported in DNA 2.0 really intensely and were also part of our original seed grant phase. Um, we really are looking forward to tonight and hope that y'all are able to enjoy all five. Thanks.